let's welcome the next set of speakers. Well, so hello everyone. So this is gonna be a very, very short introduction to federated learning. So federated learning aims at solving optimization problems in a distributed way without sharing the data. And that's the most important thing in our project, without sharing the data. Okay, so we don't share the data. So we consider a empirical risk minimization template because I mean you know it covers a lot of uh, learning tasks. So in general, if have algorithms and okay, so we couldn't figure out how to put figures there. So then I have this one. So we have a server which initializes its model. And then a subset of in each run, a subset of a clients is participating. So server distributes and propagates the initial way to the clients. So each client in that subset updates its model and then sends the updated model back to the server. Server does aggregation, kind of maybe weighted averaging or something, and propagates it back to the clients. And we have this one, and like we have back and forth until we have kind of uh, convergence. Uh, so, what are the challenges? What are the relevant challenges? Uh, okay, it's two fingers scrolling, yeah. Okay, nice. So, I think the most important challenge in federated learning is privacy and security. It's twofold. So since we are not sharing the data, it's alone. And local uh, training increases the risk of attacks. And the second one is that the exchange and uh, model parameters may still leak uh, sensitive information about your data. And what to mean by that? Data heterogeneity, uh, which may lead to divergence of your model and dec uh, decreases the efficiency. And computational cost, which our project has to do with this one actually. So at the end of the day, we want to show that our, this algorithm that we have implemented at AVG is scalable over number of clients and amount of data. And eventually the personalization is more for so actually so in personalization, we aim to learn device-specific models along with a global model to reduce the generalization error and we should customize learning performance. So what we have implemented is FedAVG. That's the main cornerstone of many federated learning algorithms. So our model is CNN. Clients uh, optimizer is HGD or gradient descent one and server does weighted averaging and our data set is CIFAR. The flow is yours. <laughs> so what I will present uh, so oh yeah for, first so we talk about the federated uh, learning we so with the use of Auto work, sorry for the pronunciation. <laughs> um, and we use, like, we code it in PyTorch. Uh, we use, first, the requirement is Databricks requirement, running time uh, 9.1, machine learning, auto root. Uh, we use the um, CPU, Databricks 9 to 1, and so on. You have things on the GPU. Uh, so, yeah, what I will explain is about the federated learning. First in details, and um, we will dig into the code, is more what's happened in a single node. Like, so we will, is what we are gonna see. So for that, first we did on the Vanilla uh, convolutional neural network to just, because, because the aim is more to understand or to dig into something more complicated. So that's the whole uh, uh, idea of code which is makes it so simple, so you can easily extend the one um, uh, client's uh, code to the client also. 
on the well during the preparation we also did like on the different data set means but here we will focus only on cipher c410 uh, uh so here is the neural network that we use so we have two convolutional two convolutional layer uh one dropout um the two fully connected layer uh also we use as the um the activation function, the, the log softmax, so it's like a classic if you want to do like classification problem. Um, yeah. uh, so the main things, so here the batch size is 100 and the number of epoch is three. So I will record like here, three is the number of global epochs. So how your data set goes through the structure. So globally, so here it would be three. And um, momentum, this is just for the uh, optimizer, log interval is only for print, uh, print, print uh, the training parameters. And what is important here is illocal five. So here is the number of epoch inside one mode. And here is uh, where the whole federated uh, learning thing is important on that uh, illocal. Um, so now it's like the training loop for one node. So you have, you just like here, the training loop, you have your batch and so on. You have your, where you use your ELOX. So your epoch, local epoch. Um, optimizer, your optimizer and so on. I'll put a, and the negative log likely would loss for the classifier problem. And the optimization step. So it's like a very classical uh, training loop, except you have here this uh, for loop for the federated learning. Um, and I guess the dot zero underscore grad is what an initialization. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, then here is just uh, how to like uh, the save checkpoints so to save the weights during the training in case that you uh the server just crash um run single log training with spiders so here it will be like the whole training process so the training loop here you will uh, download and prepare the data sets and also i recall like for the federated learning you have to download the data set on each node independently and here you can play for example you can have different part of the data set on each node. And also we didn't do it here, but you have you could have, for example, different architecture on each node that will learn a different things. And at the end you have at the end you have different loss that you will do a mean at the end of the here you will do the mean of every uh, loss that you learn here. Um, but here we do like something very simple. So sci-far for everybody and the the Vanilla architecture for also every node. Um, so yeah, just importation of the data set of the architecture. We do this, we do a, like a stochastic gradient descent and, uh, and that is like with train and so on. We taste also the, of your interest, oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, um, here we go. Then and here, uh, the results is <laughs> for like another, so I mistakenly removed the output, uh, uh, the main GPU that we run this on. So the, the answer here is like 68 seconds, but for that GPU was like 67 seconds. Um, yeah. And, and, and we will see later like yeah, uh, how we remove it. Um, and here, for example, you can see how it works with like the three epoch every time and so on. Um, the, inside um inner loop on each node in the song. Uh nothing like uh, that yet. Like the CPU and another and now we are, we will present you how how to migrate to yeah um, so horrible okay, thank you. Uh, yeah I think now I can say something. Okay. So just uh uh, Amandi, can you just uh, yeah 
escrow, whenever I said like you can screw down or screw up, okay? Can, okay, thank you. So, uh, so far what you have seen is just a typical uh, machine learning deep neural network for a classification problem. And nothing was uh, new actually that much. Uh, uh, so uh, what happened actually when uh, we were looking to implement this federated learning problem, uh, the problem was like uh, we tried to implement by uh, different kind of packages like uh, Python, uh, TensorFlow, but uh, it was a little bit complicated because then we need to be scalable. And then we figure out, we found out uh, that, okay, like this Horwood can do all this stuff for us. So the reason that we use Horwood is like, first of all, it's like, uh, it's very easy to code with the Horwood. And then another uh, advantage of using this Horwood is like uh, very scalable and is very efficient. What does it mean efficiency? Uh, for example, this chart that you can see, I borrowed from their, their web page. It shows that when, for example, we uh, increase the number of devices or the number of GPU can be, the number of CPU, whatever, any kind of distributed uh, network that we have, uh, like uh, the throughput of the, uh, this Hurubut by using different uh, communication uh, protocol, for example, TCP or RDMA. And you can see is the uh, is very good. It's is not the like for example in the very very like in the five hundred twelve uh, number of devices is not uh, it couldn't reach the optimal uh, uh, throughput. But uh, in like one hundred twenty eight or something like this is almost uh, optimal uh, because in the distributed computing the main challenges is the communication between the nodes. As also Ali mentioned at the first in the federated learning as well. Federated learning is one, uh, this uh, you can consider one uh, special case of like uh, this distributed computing problem. And uh, so, yeah, that's it. So uh, this shows that like, uh, so this whole wood is so, super easy to work with that. And, uh, but uh, when you want to use this whole wood, there are different kinds of collective operators. And uh, uh, so what does it mean, this collective operators? You need to select the proper one for your problem. For example, for, uh, for the federated learning, uh, we need, uh, if you remember in step two and step four, uh, we had two uh, different uh, collective operators. One of them is broadcasting, another is uh, gathering or are reducing, uh, um, uh, sorry, gathering uh, approach. So what does it mean? For example, this is here. here. Uh, like uh, the first one is the R reduce. In the R reduce, what what's happened? It just aggregate data among multiple processor, and then uh, this will result back to all of them. And um, as you can see, for example, here five, two, seven, four are aggregated or summed, uh, and then they uh, send back the result to each individual value of that element. For example, it can be a tensor, it can be a network, it can be like uh, different GPUs. And the Hurwood supports uh, not all of these uh, collective uh, operators, unfortunately, just like all reduce, all gather. Uh, can you scroll down a little bit? Okay, like broadcast, these are some uh, some of like uh, reduce scatter, all to all. Yeah, these are uh, the kind of uh, collective operator that already uh, existed in the Hurwood, but uh, like there are other kind of uh, collected operators like uh, this reduce or gather, uh, which is not uh, implemented. In the federated learning problem, in general, you need uh, broadcasting, this broadcast and then reduce. Unfortunately, we we don't have this reduce or gather operation in the Hurwood, but uh, because we focus on the federated averaging, we just, uh, we were interested in just uh, average and then send back. Uh, we didn't want to update the model in global round of the federated learning. So we did kind of a trick, like uh, we used R reduce because in the R reduce uh, operators, it's already just send the average to the, their model. Do not, op so we don't need the update. So it's completely fit for our problem. And then uh, can you go down, uh, scroll down, thank you, okay. And then, uh, yeah, here, about other some, and something that uh, I think in the next round, uh, Human's gonna explain about this, uh, uh, our implementation. We use other some, uh, the difference of like, you can do different kind of aggregation, like average, summation, whatever. And one of them is other sum. Why we use this other sum to prevent the 
uh, like uh, divergence. Why? Because like uh, the first picture, for example, sorry, scroll up a little. Yeah, yeah, perfect. So when the gradient are very close to each other in the same direction, uh, then uh, if you sum uh, some of them, uh, then it would the result would be the gray uh, vector that you can see. And uh, but the average would be the green one, and the green my green one may be safer or like your desire. Okay, in the optimization, because it's just a right direction, but uh, maybe you don't want to go or diverge from the that point that much. But if the gradient, like the second figure, are orthogonal, then the summation would be the, the good result that you want. So if the gradient are between these two, so you need something between. And this is the actually the... Um, uh, that other sum. Other sum is just a kind of weighted sum of these two. And th that's the reason that like we use this other sum and the result uh, uh, improved actually. The convergence would be faster. Okay, can you scroll down a little bit? Yeah, that, and the last part, uh, the, the only point about this uh, whole wood is like, uh, first of all, you can, it, it support different kind of uh, distributed architecture like uh, this uh, different hierarchical, circular or hierarchical, for example, you can have a different CPU on different nodes and each node has a multiple GPU. It supports all this kind of architecture. And the good one is like, you don't need to do that much. It's just with the change in one, two lines of codes, it's super easy, super duper easy. And you can like uh, write the codes. For example, what you need to do, actually the last line here, is something that, for example, you need to do for the Huruwood. Um, you just write this and give it the optimizer, which kind of optimizer, number, the, your model, and the compression, because all these collective or MPI uh, methods or operators are like, you can apply this uh, compression. You can quantize your, your value, your tensor, and then do some calculation or communication to reduce the cost of the communication and com computation at the same time. And uh, yeah, I think uh, by by this, I think I, I'm gonna hand over to the human to so much, continue Faye. to go to the... Yeah, thanks. But... So now uh, we go uh, a little bit uh, into the practical stuff, like how we should implement this. So uh, we are considering here the case that we have uh, like, I mean, we have two types of scalability here. So one of them is that the number of clients go to infinity. One of the other one is that the, uh, each one of the clients may have a lot of uh, data to handle. So we only consider the case that the number of clients are increasing, but the other case is also uh, handled with the, with the rubric. So first of all, of course, the uh, um, report of the uh, module that we need. So what Rubric does is that we define this uh, train Rubric function what Hurwood does is that it's going to break it down on uh, on basically different uh, clients that we are working with. Here, each client is considered to have one GPU, but it, it can be increased easily, and I will see how. Each client may have its own um, uh, optimizer and also its own model to be trained. Um, so the thing that we should do uh, is this, uh, the magic happens with the simplicity of the Hurwood, which is you just initialize at the beginning, you find the device, then we have to uh, label the shards properly according to the uh, um, the rank kind of that they have. So the rank was given, we look at it as the clients, as the clients, but the rank can be used uh, in, in what they have in their documentation is for GPUs. But you can use them uh, because each GPU, each client may have multiple GPUs. So you can also have systems that have multiple GPUs in, uh, in, and look at them like clients. Uh, in the root. So then you just uh, set the ranks. So usually we have a root rank, root rank, which is the server, and uh, that's the zero rank. And, and uh, when you when you input the data set, uh, you should we, we just label them. So the only difference with the single node one is this line here. We just uh, give them the rank of the uh, GPU that they're currently being uh, reported on. Now we define the sampler. So the sampler is going to sample from uh, that data set and then uh, pass it on to the loader, so load it on the GPU. And um, here the, the difference is again this rank of the HVD, the rank which is given. And uh, then here I have this model, you can you can define ifs here and then choose the model that you like for that client. Okay, so different models can have different clients. 
And also the same thing here for the optimizer, you can uh, choose which, uh, which client has which optimizer. And there's a point here that the learning rate is now multiplied by uh, the HVD that size. The HVD that size here is like the size of the uh, cluster on that, the GPUs on that uh, client. Now, where does that come from? So we uh, dig a little bit deep into that. So the update that they consider in uh, in this uh, CD is of course like uh, like top equation. Then um, yeah, they consider two scenarios. Like you update with the with the one single update with the step size uh, eta hat, while you have uh, considered all the k sub batches, or the case that you uh, continue the updates for uh, k single steps. And then you will get the middle this uh, this equation in the middle. Now these two are not, of course, they are not equal because here the gradients are not the same. But they what they say in the paper is that they impose a very hard uh, or maybe unrealistic uh, assumption that these gradients they assume to be the same. And then with that assumption, by setting eta hat to be k eta, you will get the same. You will get that w uh, at uh, t plus one is the same as uh, w t plus k. Okay, so uh, this assumption, as I said, is not true, but empirically they notice that this works and they get the same loss also. So that's why they multiply this uh, uh, learning rate with, uh, with the size of the uh, Hugo cluster. And then uh, they just wrap the optimizer in this uh, Hugo uh, distribute optimizer. So there are a couple of points here. So we also use this adaptive sum. Uh, first one is that when you want to implement it, uh, it's better that you not follow the what's easily stated on the uh, uh, on the web page because uh, and they mentioned that you should use with the capital S here, but you should not. It should be a small s. So <laughs> that took some time. Uh, the second thing is uh, uh, is that adaptive sum only works with the power of two number of uh, processors. Uh, for for the usual one, you should have to use uh, HPD sum. And uh, yeah, if you want to kind of go beyond and use multiple optimizers and uh, uh, multiple number of GPUs for each client, you have to, uh, for example, there are examples that, uh, that I uh, wrote them here, how you can implement it. All right, next step is just to, uh, you, you put the root rank to be the uh, zero uh, cluster client, and then uh, you broadcast the initializations and you go to the training epoch that you have. And each one of them have their own uh, local updates as well. So in terms of implementations, we did both on CPUs and GPUs. Um, so for the for the one, uh, like the case that we have like only one uh, um, client, we can see that uh, here, uh, I have all this. This, this can result in unexpected behavior. What? No. <laughs> it's a warning, I guess everything works. But... Yeah, 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 it works. Uh, so, okay, let me tell you that. Installing here Hulwood is not as easy as it looks. <laughs> Uh, so first of all, you have to install the, uh, so here, that's why we get this. So it's the, uh, it, it, I did the sanity check and make sure that this is not causing me a problem. Uh, it works, but um, uh, so the reason is that when you install, bring, I mean, run the cluster, it, it has already built in uh, everything yeah. in it. So the root, however, was not the same as the version that was installed for the CPU uh, clusters. Yes. So you had to uninstall the uh, torch yeah. and uninstall Hulubud, yeah. install the torch and install yeah. Hulubud. Yeah. But when you get to the last step, which is installing Hulubud, the server would have been uh, crashed. And you got, it just gave you this uh, waiting for driver to become healthy and it never became healthy. Okay. So you had to, we couldn't install it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's why, I, that's the closest mm -hmm. I could get. But also other people are using this cluster that you were using. No, it was, yeah, okay. But it, it doesn't bother anyone else. Well, no, it's cool. I, I'm totally. No, no, I'm be... not surprised at all. <laughs> you know, this is very standard uh, pain. You know? mm. uh, but then, uh, yeah. So the final result of this uh, execution times in terms of so what we're looking for was the scalability. That for one, two, four, and eight uh, number of workers, you can see it's the, easily the execution time is uh, going down. However, it's not by half. Exactly, for example, from one to two, which uh, for which we account for the uh, that the difference that Zaid mentioned to the optimal uh, um, uh, scaling that they couldn't reach. So 
And then for the GPU case, uh, we didn't, uh, of course, we didn't have that uh, four and eight uh, worker on the, on the GPU, so we didn't consider that those cases. However, the difference in the execution time was huge already with one worker on the GPU cluster. So, and this is also a very, yeah, basic uh, schematic to uh, show the results. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're good. Um, by the way, it didn't took that much time. I, I, was, I was curious about that, so it doesn't really uh, take money. <laughs> no, zero. Uh, yeah, because yeah, that's zero because very good, very good. <laughs> yeah, because we didn't have any. Yeah, it's any amount. Yeah, yeah. You can you can run questions yourself, right? Please ask any questions. Yeah, please ask. Did you Everyone. did you need PyTorch one point nine? Is it like is the most up to date or about version using yeah, that you know, it, that's the problem that I was facing because the Google which is installed uses that uh, version of PyTorch and then uh, I could not install Google with the new version of PyTorch so I had to use 1.9 okay because I think it's 113 now or something yeah it's 130 which is installed yeah. yeah and it works totally fine for the GPU case okay but for the CPU clusters it didn't work All right. Yeah. I mean, in, in my defense, I just cloned the not defense, but what I did is I just cloned that um, the, the ML runtime mm -hmm. right, uh, with those things uh, Christian William did. Of course, that was a year ago, but uh, then because the I have given you guys manage rights, like you can do whatever, right? So I thought mm -hmm. you would just so, but but you somehow locked yourself into the installed horrible version. No, that's why I'm trying to. I tried to uninstall okay, it yeah, okay. and install it again. Yeah, okay, then it should be fine, right? Yeah. It's the maintain to work for a board? Uh, yeah, it is. It's Uber that's behind it. What? Uber. 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 It's Uber. Uber. Yeah, Uber is Uber. Uber. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there's still the uh, papers. Oh, there's Uber is running. Or running. Or running. Yeah, that's the core that they're using. Yeah. I have a small question. I mean, if I correct me if mistaken, but the way you do it is you run a X number of epoch mm -hmm. totally and then you aggregate all the weights necessarily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So intuitively, I mean adding more clients should also have an impact on test accuracy. Adding more clients? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. But if you say that it fixes the data. So that's practically doesn't put out Yeah. Yeah, 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 but you should, you didn't, then I didn't understand what you say, but we have a reducing time, which means that if you increase, we have a fixed time. Yeah, right. No, but I was just wondering if it's like, although it's faster, I mean, if it has an impact on the resulting model. You know. I didn't get the question. I mean, although it's faster, right? mm -hmm. I wonder if it has an impact on the uh, yes. resulting, yes, yeah. Yeah, resulting Oh, yeah, no, they are almost the same. So I have the test results here as well. So they're almost all around 1.9, uh -huh. uh, five here, for example. The other one is, uh, the test not. Uh, after the CPUs, I have another one. It's 1.5 here. And uh, for this guy, 1.58. And 1.7, so mm -hmm. that, it seems like there's a, Decrease in the, this is not reliable. The, but this is not reliable because you are uh, breaking down the, uh, uh, be, as you said, the data set is fixed in the data set. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, the average is going to be done on, as you increase the number of cores, uh, it's going to be done on less number of data sets. Oh, yeah, that's also true. We didn't care about that. Right. But data homogeneity is also yeah. uh, an impact, right? Sometimes they put on the Yeah, exactly. If you put M list with like all the one and five, the one and five, it's better. Two. No more questions? Okay, let's thank them again.